So see here, we can start to see that. So now if I wanted to add more de uh, a detailed call out to this and look at just one section of this um, drawing, the way to do that would be you go to call out and if you click that, there's two different ones. So there's just a standard rectangle call out or if you want like a custom shape, you can do sketch and it will let you sketch the profile of it. So if you wanted to grab like a L shape, something like that, um, they do exactly the same thing. So once you click rectangle or the other one, you can come in here and draw a detail around the stair here. And then this bubble, we can take it outside like that. If you want to break the elbow, you can. And then if I take it off thin lines, you should be able to see. So here, under visibility graphics, so I'm going to go to my, I don't have a view template on this one. So we've got that guy. So that's a call out. And then we have the shaft. You yeah. go architecture and you go over to shaft Come on. oh that's What might it also be? Might be for what? Oh, well, you can't see those? Cut and it showed up. The other one's done. Mm -hmm. And it's in the template, it shows it's, that it's there. Mm -hmm. And in what I did, the reveal hidden, it's, it only reveals the job, the site. Hmm. Okay, I have to look at it. So here, what I've done now, I created that little call out. So you can see here, it's, it has a bubble around there, and then it has this window out here, and there's no information. So we haven't dropped this one onto a sheet. So just like when we looked at the section, the sections that we create have this bubble. And it's empty and as soon as you drop it onto a sheet that gets filled in because it's linked so if you double click this um, you can see here the call out so if we go to let's make a sheet for stair let's rename one of these let's call this one stair section What I call that one on the assignment?
So to drop those onto this sheet, all we got to do is scroll to them and look at section three, which is the one that was. And you drop that on there. And if you want that to be bigger, you can stretch it or we can make the scale bigger. And then the call out, notice how by default there is nothing there. And as soon as we drop this on, it's going to populate. So once you click there, now it says 2A301 because it's actually placed them. And so here we can adjust this. We can say this should actually be different scale if we want. Right now it's showing tiny because that's what our view template is set to. So these are showing at the same scale. But we don't need them to be the same. So if I go to that one, what's this got set to? We can just say none for now. And we can make this a much larger scale. to see how much bigger it got. We can go way bigger than that even. What did you grab to draw? To, I mean, what did you grab to drag that onto your sheet? Oh, you grab the actual view here. So I can redo that. So once you have your sheet ready, you just go over here on the project browser, you scroll down, find the, the actual view that you want to pull over, and then you just drag it right on. And you click. Oh, with the section and the call out. And then the call out is a separate drawing. And you can drop it in. Because once you create the call out, it puts the call out on that initial section, nice. and then it actually generates a new view that's cropped to that whatever shape you I had. That part where it created that. Mm -hmm. So we have that, and then we can keep changing this, like if you double click in there to a larger scale. So maybe we can go to one inch or bigger. And then on this one, we can actually dimension to it. How do you make that um, selection larger on the sheet if it's too small? It's the scale. Um, so you need to go to that drawing and change the scale. And it will automatically change size here. So on that one, we can turn off. Yeah, if you want to make it bigger or smaller, it just depend on what size you want it. Then at some point, you detail right on top of this. Yep. You you detail in the view though, not in the sheet, right? Or right. You can actually, because this will become, you can make a drafting view for this. And then we'll start looking at them, but see here you get all this, this whole detail section. Yes. So there's detail components like um, we were talking about before, like brick. And let's say I wanted to draw a brick here. You just, once you start drawing it, it'll just put them in. And then see it fills it in with the hatch and everything. And then, so then these, just like the other types, we can edit them. So you could make it. And then there's tons of different um, types of things that you can load, detailing components like curtain wall. So you could load a whole systems, like let's say you were using like a Conier curtain wall, you could download their whole set of details. And then you just look and say, okay, I have a 3 and 5 eighths mullion 
by six inches. Okay, where look at that's the detail of it. And then here's a section view, here's a plan view, and then you're just you're just clicking and dropping. Uh, so then I'll ask a question based on what you just said. Mm -hmm. Last time I was in Reddit, I could load those basic, basically the brand mm -hmm. families, but I, it took me directly to the auto, the, all the best. I don't know what it was back then, but mm -hmm. basically it works like. Do they still do it that way? You have to go to the brand, like uh, you know, Jell O or whatever. Yeah, those would typically would have their own. So um, let's say, like, I'm trying to think of someone that I know has Revit families, but we could look at, like, Yes, okay, because that's the way I was doing it um, for this project. I have a family. I was going to the, or for a different project, I was yeah, running parallel kind of run. So I just downloaded specific families from their websites. Right. So see here, so this is pretty common. Mm -hmm. So you'll see like the product, all its information, and then if you want, you can get, see like it has like different um, types of downloads. Right. And then you can download it or you can go back to their website and look at their stuff. This will probably take you to the Conier website. You can see all the other Revit models that they have. 1600. It just seemed like it, the last time I was in it, 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 Autodesk was bringing all of the brands into their mm -hmm. into their sphere, so they can just pick from them, almost like picking off the U.S. Imperial, you know, right on the home. Right? Yeah, but mm -hmm. it's on the Autodesk website instead of having to. Yeah, because they have like the standard. Too, but... Right, they have like the standard library, and then there's like an extended library that you can add to your computer. But it's gonna, it's just huge. So like it just depends like how much you use it and and at most offices they have their own library that they've been building over the years right. and it will be the way ours is set up is based off of the spec number right. so like all the different sections so when you're looking for a family you're like all right what division is that in right. and so you'll know okay I look in division eight look for that system and then yeah and then you grab it and you just drop it in and then our specs are tied off of that so it, it already knows what specs to pull based off of what mm -hmm. those components are named and if I start using this for residential I have to blow them up doing that myself right mm -hmm. and I mean if you look online you'll probably find at least like naming standards and stuff like that for families and you could probably find like a good set of like that someone has probably provided for free and you can go through and see what's worth using or what's not and then well the commercial guys have their own stuff I might just try to grab at least try to keep it mm -hmm. I just don't know I'm so fast I'm so fast with all my other yeah I'm so fast mm -hmm. so that's this guy and then you can also um if I don't want to get too far into all this stuff because it's going to start to confuse you guys um, but you can grab like come on I don't want to get ahead of you. So what else do you need to know for this one? Let's look at that sign up. So that takes care of that guy. We already went over ceilings. The building section you already know. And these guys should all be good. So as long as you've been kind of keeping up, you can just keep printing your sheets and then just staying up to date with what we have here and don't worry if you're not if you don't have a ton of detail in there if it just looks simple because as we keep going you'll keep adding more and more detail to it so right so if you if you want to use the template you need it to be all the same scale so what I did to make that work I just turned it off 
you can either duplicate it as a new template or you can turn it off. Once you turn off a view template, it doesn't change what the view looks like. It just doesn't apply that template anymore. So that you can how keep. You kept the shadows? Yep. So I applied the template. It was already on there, and I just turned it off. Got it. That's what I was trying to do. So it didn't look quite as But as you start detailing these things, they look really good because you can add. And you can add a lot of detail from with like the hatches and stuff like that and the fills and then the thickness of the lines you can adjust. So I don't know if you saw but I went in here and then if you go under the visibility settings you can also go down here to object styles. So what this will do is a lot of different objects use different settings for how they're displayed. So by default, those callouts, it was set to 1, but I wanted the lines to be a little bit bigger. So then the leader line still is set to that. So if I wanted it to be like 4, I can hit apply now. So that's kind of how you control like a CTV and all that. Right. Mm -hmm. So now see that? See how different it looks? Yeah. And you can keep testing it and applying like one little thing at a time and then getting it to read really clearly. And then toggle between thin lines and then not thin lines. Because see there, like it's really hard to tell what you're doing. But once you put it back off of thin lines, it will go in and kind of give I you see. the full. Well, I noticed that the, uh, the hang up, I don't really look at the, the pin ups out on the display. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of rabbit drawings. Yeah. And there's one that really stands out as, you know, it looks really good. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just hanging up in the line that it's in the shade. Yep. And they're all just, they're all rabbit, but that one just looks phenomenal. Yep. And once you get the style down, it's just about applying it to the view. So it makes it really fast. So you can save as a view template and then just go. Yes. Once you and one click. Time to get it right. Yep.